I have switched to ChadCN UI and let's take a look how you can do that too. Okay, so before installing ChadCN UI components, we do need to make sure that we have import aliases configured for our next JS application. Go to tsconfigjson. We need to add a couple more things. Base URL dot and we do need paths. So basically what it does is, for example, we can search for this particular example. And we do have an import from the server repositories user repository. So as you can see, we need to go like three levels up and then uh, from source go to server into repositories and then user repository. With this particular import alias, we can skip those three dots and just replace it with the ETA server repositories user repository. So basically, this thing starts your import statement from the source directory. Now we can open up the ChadCN website and take a look how to install these components. So ChadCN UI has a little bit different approach compared to any other uh, UI components library due to the fact that there is no NPM package. You have two options how you can install uh, the components. One is manual, the other one is using their uh, CLI tool. So if you would choose to install it manually, all you would need to do is select the component you want, open the installation and the manual tab, and you will find the instructions how to do that. So since ShadCN UI is based on Radix UI library, which is headless, you sometimes will need to install some uh, particular library for Radix UI, and then you just copy-paste all the source code from for the particular component, so in this case button, and you open your code, create a component, for example, button TSX, and just paste all the code and change the imports if required. But we won't be doing it this way. So let's delete the button. We'll be installing the components using their CLI tool. So let's go from the very start, uh, getting started, installation. Let's choose Next.js. The first step is to create the project. Since we already have our finance dashboard application, we'll skip this. The other one is to run the ChadCN UI init CLI command. Let's open the terminal. And npx ChadCN UI latest init. So now you will be asked some questions. So would you like to use TypeScript? Of course, yes. Let's say default. For now, let's say slate. Where is your global CSS file? And they provide like app slash global CSS, but in our application, it's under source styles global CSS. So source styles global.css. Enter. Would you like to use CSS variables? Yes. Are you using? No, we are not using any custom prefix. Where is your Tailwind config GS located? So we do have a little bit different name for our Tailwind config from create t3 app. So let's adjust this, configure the import aliases for components. So yeah, as I previously showed, we already configured the alias, so it's okay. Alias for utils, okay. Uh, are you using React server components in, for this project? We won't be using them, so no. Right configuration to component JSON. Yes. All right, success. Damn, I made a mistake. It was global CSS, not global. So let's just remove this one, the old one, and rename this one to add the S in the end. There is also a step for fonts, but uh, I will be using the default fonts as for right now. Yeah, basically that's it for the main installation. So what this CLI did, it updated our global CSS with some base colors for the light theme and dark theme. Also, it created the components JSON, which is used basically for the shad CN CLI to know which components to install, what are the paths and analysis, etc. 
And that's it. And of course, it also updated the Tailwind config with some more stuff in it, but we can skip this for now. Okay, so now let's create a user link component where we'll be using Chadcian UI components. So let's call it user link. And for starters, we just take the current logged in user from the auth0 hook use user. If there is no currently logged in user, return null. Otherwise, just render some user link. And also we want to render this component in our header. So let's do that just after the navigation. And also let's import this component. So yeah, we do have the user link rendered. Now for the installation of Chadcian UI components themselves. Let's start from the avatar. We select the avatar from the components and we do have a guideline how to add this component and how to use it. So we will run this simple CLI command in our project. In the terminal, let's stop the project, run npx add avatar. Okay, so we should have a new directory in our project under the components UI. And as you can see, the CLI automatically added the avatar component. This means that we do have whole ownership of this particular component. If we would like, we could make any changes to it, tweak some styles or change logic or whatever. It's basically your component. So that's one of the differences of the Chad CN UI. All right, so let's use this component. As in the usage example, you can see that this component exports three different things, which is avatar, avatar fallback, and avatar image. So let's just say that we want an avatar imported from Eta Components UI avatar. Let's do avatar image. For the source of the image, let's say take it from the user picture and if it's empty just in case add the empty string. And as for avatar fallback, let's say it will be user.name and the first letter. Okay, let's double check how it looks. And as you can see, the avatar image is being displayed. And if I would set the user picture just to, let's say, null, so we could test the avatar fallback. Let's ignore all the warnings. We can see that the fallback is being rendered. So even we could do like this. So the fallback is being displayed, but if the user picture is present, it will be displayed. So that's how easy it is to add ChadCN UI components. But we also need a few more. We want to be able to click on this avatar. So for that, let's say we want to also add a ChadCN button. So let's open button. Again, there is a CLI command for that. Let's run this command. Stop the server, add button. Button is installed, as you can see in the UI directory. Let's start the server again. And let's add this button. So we basically can, we can wrap this avatar in the button. We import that from the, from the components UI button. And we can also give it some classes for position height, width, and some roundness. Also, I will give the variant of host, basically so that it would be invisible, only clickable. The last component we want from ChadCN UI is a dropdown, because I want to be able to click on it, see some settings, uh, switch, for example, to the dark mode, or just simply log out. So yet again, just open the 
instructions from the chat CN itself. Drop down menu, copy the command, and run in the terminal. Okay, let's start the server again. So from the drop downs, we will need a little bit more components. We can import them below the button. We will need drop down menu, drop down menu content, group, item, label, separator, shortcut, and trigger. Basically, you can find all the documentation in the chat CN documentation. And now we can wrap everything with the drop down menu. Let's say that our drop down menu trigger will be our button which we created previously. And the drop down content for now some random text. Let's see what we got. Yeah, as you can see, I can press on the drop down menu trigger, which is our button with the avatar, and I can see this content. But now let's improve it a bit. For starters, let's start with the drop down menu label component. Let's say the class name will be font normal. And in the label, we will print the user's name and email. Let's double check how it looks. And we can see that it already looks a little bit better. Now let's add the drop down separator just for the visuals and the drop down group. Within the group, we'll say we want to drop down, drop down menu item with the name of settings. And also, we can give a drop down menu shortcut. with some something like to do. Let's take a look how it looks. Menu item must be used within menu content. So what I have done... Ah, all of this has to go in the drop-down menu content. So after the label, let's refresh. All right, so we do have a separator. We do have some settings, which right now does nothing. And also we can do one more drop down menu item for a logout button. So yeah, we do have a logout and on click, it will make the auth zero to log me out. I'm not sure about you, but I'm on the dark mode side. Luckily with Chad CN UI, it's very easy to switch between light mode and dark mode. So we can open up the instructions from the documentation, click on Next.js. All you have to do is install Next Themes library. Let's do that. Start our application again. The next step is to create a theme provider. So let's copy the code and under the components, let's just collapse this one under the components. We create a new component named theme provider. I will use a little bit different name than they are suggesting. So copy the code, save it. Uh, we are not using those in this particular project. All right. The next step is to wrap your root layout with this provider. So our root layout is in the layout component. So instead of just React fragment, let's say we want to use theme provider, import from our component, and also let's just copy those props as they suggest. And format the code. The last step is to add a button which would allow the users to switch between light mode, dark mode, or a system. But I want to do that a little bit different. And also we can check the code how to do that. But I want to add this button into this drop-down menu. Let's open our user link component. And in here we can use uh, use theme hook, which has two things we will need. It's one is set theme function and the other one is resolve theme. Let's also create a simple variable which would say is dark theme. And it's a dark theme if resolved theme is equal 
to a string dark and also a function for toggling the theme between dark mode and light mode. So anonymous function, set theme, and if it's dark theme already, let's set it to the light, otherwise set it to dark. Okay, so for the dropdown itself, let's add one more dropdown menu item, which on click will call this toggle theme function. Inside of it, we will say switch to if currently is a dark theme, then say switch to the light theme or dark otherwise. And now let's add a simple icon indicating what theme is currently on. So we will do that in the drop down menu shortcut. And yet again, if it's dark theme, let's render a sun icon which we can import from Lucid React. This comes together with a Shad CN installation. So if it's a dark theme, let's say render sun. And if it's not, then let's render a moon. And let's give the same class name. And as you can see, as we provided the default theme to be a system one, and I'm a dark side user, our application instantly switched to the dark theme. But also we can now manually switch between the dark theme and the light theme by just clicking this drop down menu item. So let's try to switch to the light. And as you can see, the icon from the sun and moon is changing accordingly. That's how simple it is. Lastly, I would also like to change the color theme of our application. And for that, Shad CN UI also has some good stuff. So we can go to the themes, and in here you can pick and choose whatever color theme you want for your application. You can even do a little bit of customizations. I will pick a blue one, let's say, and then all you have to do is copy the code, which is basically only the CSS stuff. So let's say copy. And in order to apply this color scheme, all you have to do is open your global CSS file. And instead of your old layer base, paste a new one and save it. And we do have a new color scheme. Because as you can see, there is a blue borders, you know. Thank you for watching. Click that subscribe button if you don't want to miss the upcoming video in which we will be building the bank accounts page where we will be creating new bank accounts, retrieving them using a lot more CHAD CN UI components and stuff like that.